Welcome to Cooking with Science. Today we're making rock candy and we're gonna show you the science behind why and how it works. This is really cool, I'm glad you're here. Welcome back to Destructive Creativity. I'm Jonathan Allers. Here, we love science experiments, and we love showing you the science behind everyday objects. And who doesn't like candy? So let's mix a few things together and learn something. Okay, so today we are making rock candy. And it's probably an experiment that you at least you probably know about, but we want to go into super saturated solutions and the crystal structure of sucrose. So this is really cool. I have a lot of equipment here that we're gonna use. You don't need all of this equipment. Pretty much, if you wanna make rock candy at home, you just take one cup of boiling water, three cups of sugar, put them in, and then make sure everything's dissolved. Stick, I don't know, a pipe cleaner or a piece of string in that solution and let it cool down. Eventually, sugar crystals will form on that piece of string and you have, ta-da, rock candy. And you can flavor them or color them or whatever. But this would be a really short episode if we just ended it here. So we want to show you what's going on. So I have a tiny little microscope here, an electronic microscope. I've just put some white sugar underneath this electronic microscope. And as you can see, these tiny crystals here, that's sugar. That's what sugar looks like. And you see these cool crystal structures that are showing up? We are going to be growing that exact shape except for on a bigger scale and showing you exactly how to make the biggest crystals possible. <laughs> this is one of my favorite experiments to actually show solubility curves and solubility graphs, which is very exciting, kinda. So what is a solubility curve? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is a solubility graph. So let's take a look. On the horizontal bottom, which is the x-axis, we have temperature in Celsius. And on the y-axis, which is the up and down, we have the amount in grams of material that can be dissolved in 100 milliliters of distilled water. And then you just kind of find out what temperature your liquid is at and how much material can be dissolved at that temperature. It's very cool. You can find it on pretty much any substance anywhere just by googling it. So for this experiment, we're just going to start off with 100 milliliters, and I'm going to just pour it into... Now, if you were to do this yourself, you do not need to be very precise, because, hey, you're just making candy. Nothing bad is going to happen if you have a little bit too much or too little water. The next step is to figure out the temperature of our water, so we can figure out how much sugar we can dissolve in this water right now. So I'm just going to use a little kitchen thermometer. We're going to just put that in right there, and it is... 21 degrees, so pretty much room temperature. So according to our solubility graph, which I have just pulled up here, if the water is 21 degrees, we can fit approximately 200 grams of sugar inside of this water at this temperature. Now, I just have a little kitchen scale here. We're gonna do that. That is very close to 200 grams of sugar. So this much sugar will fit inside of this tiny beaker of water. That looks amazing, but it's going to get even more so. Now, as I get this little spinner going, I'll start adding the sugar and we'll watch it dissolve. That's a lot of sugar, but because of the solubility graph, I know that this is actually all going to dissolve completely into the water. Now, here's where it gets cool. So remember, we had 200 grams of sugar mixed into that tiny little bit of 100 grams of water. If we start heating this up, we can fit another 200 grams of sugar into this beaker. And I'll show you what I mean. If you look at the solubility curve of sucrose in water, as we warm up the temperature, the amount of sugar that can be dissolved in the water rises dramatically. In fact, if we were to boil this water, we could get over 450 grams of sugar inside of this initial 100 grams of water. That's amazing. We're going to actually warm this water up and then we're going to gradually cool it down and that is where the crystals are going to be able to be formed. So that's warming up quite nicely. 
I have another 200 grams of sugar. We're gonna dissolve all of this inside of that initial 100 milliliters of water. This is incredible. This is where the super saturated solutions come into play. Because once we have this much sugar dissolved into hot water, what do you think happens when the water starts to cool down. Well, following that curve on the graph again, as the water cools down, as the solution cools down, it can no longer hold as much sugar in solution. So the sugar has to go somewhere and it's gonna turn back into its crystalline state. And if we give it a seed to start growing, it's just gonna grow bigger and bigger crystals. Something that I consistently forget and I need to be reminded of is to wear my safety glasses when I'm working with anything hot or dangerous. So if you want to do this, make sure you do it with parental supervision. Don't just turn on an oven and start boiling sugar. It's not a good idea. All right, with that being said, we are approaching, we're pretty close to 90 degrees right there. So I'm going to take this out. And then I'm going to start adding sugar. Now this is going to cool down a little bit. So it's not a perfect system but that is okay. All right, so I'm fairly confident right now we have in this beaker a fully saturated solution. So if I were to add any more sugar, it couldn't actually dissolve in that water. If you're a little bit concerned about it not being dissolved, you can just warm it up on the stovetop again and make sure that it raises above its solubility curve. So whether you're using the three to one method or the weight to liquid method, it doesn't really matter. So the next step is we need a spot for the crystals to grow onto. So right now I'm confident that no more sugar is really going to want to be dissolved in there. So I can find a stick. Uh, this again is not a food safe stick, so I'm not planning on eating these. But if you did, maybe get some chopsticks or something. Now I'm going to use my little lab helper to hold this stick in the solution. That, you don't want it touching the bottom. There we go. Now, the slower that this cools down, the larger the crystals are going to be. If I were to put this into the refrigerator right now, so there's a sudden shock of going from super saturated to a really low temperature, suddenly all of the sucrose molecules are going to say, ah, I need to get in my crystalline form immediately. And then they just kind of turn into sugar crystals, really, really small, evenly spaced all over the place. I don't want that. I want big crystals. So the way the big crystals are going to work is by cooling it down slowly. So if I really wanted to, I would wrap this in maybe some tin foil or something else like that, just to make sure that it's cooling down as slowly as possible. Now, this is going to take a couple of days probably in order for it to actually work correctly. So I'm going to leave this and then come back to you in a couple of days and show you the crystals that I have grown. Several days later. We're back! But you know what? It has been a lot longer than a couple of days because I wanted to make sure I got this right. So I've actually made a couple of food safe this time, thankfully, different colored crystals. So we're gonna open them up right now and find out how they work. Okay, first off, the one that I made with you, I've left this for a very long time because I wanted to see if I could get a single large crystal of sugar. When you do this, you probably are going to get some sugar on the top and that's okay. That's totally fine. You're just going to need to break the top up with a fork in order to get the stick or the popsicle stick out to eat your crystals. Okay, kind of break that top layer all around my stick. Oh, look at that. That is an awesome crystal. Okay, I'm gonna save some of these and show you at the end some of the cool formations that we've actually made. But let's open up the rest of these as well. Oh, what beautiful crystals. That is a rock candy that is worth eating.
Well, that is it. This has been really fun. One extra note that you probably should do, which I didn't because I got impatient, is that once you pull them out, don't run them under running water. Just let them sit and harden naturally. That'll allow the colors to kind of stay. I kind of washed off a lot of the colors because that remained in solution. But other than that, it's great. They taste awesome. You should definitely try this learn about solubility curves. And if you like this channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. We are Destructive Creativity and we have new stuff coming out every single Wednesday. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite science experiment is and I'll see if I can feature it on this channel. All right, see you next time. Bye!